Austria and Brussels. So can I give you the floor, Chancellor Court, straight away? You have the floor. Sehr geehrter Herr President. President of Parliament, President of Commission, political group leaders, ladies and gentlemen, members of the European Parliament, I am delighted to be here once again as your guest in the European Parliament to report back on the outcome of the Austrian presidency. Now, we've had a very busy six months, a packed schedule, but most importantly, very good cooperation with the European Parliament. And right at the start, I would like to thank all of you for the very positive climate of cooperation that we have benefited from between Commission, Council and Parliament over the last six months in support of our presidency. In the course of our Council presidency, we have set great store by wide-ranging cooperation with the European Parliament. I'd like to thank Juliana Bogner Staus and Carolina Edstadtler for having supported us here and representing us here during the plenary part sessions here in Strasbourg. We've had 161 trilogue sessions, and we've had uh, 53 agreements come out of those trilogue sessions. So thanks to those efforts in the Parliament, the Commission, and the Council, particularly since everybody shared in that desire to hammer out a compromise. I would also like to thank our ambassador, Nikki Maschek in Brussels and Alexander Scheinberg, uh, teams in Brussels as well as in Vienna for their contribution to the success of the presidency. And seeing as uh, we are part of a team, I'd like to thank our trio partners, uh, Bulgaria and Estonia, as well as the Romanian presidency, and wish them every success for what is said to be a very busy six months ahead. Ladies Ladies and gentlemen, I was here in July of last year, and on that occasion, I said that we didn't ought to take the European Union for granted, rather that day in, day out, we have to endeavor to make it better. Now, often, we have some very difficult debates, and I have always maintained that there is far more that unites us than can ever divide us. And I think that has proved to be the case. We in the European Union repeatedly come up against the fact that the structures are extremely complex. And on occasion, you feel that the way ahead is impossible, but ultimately you realize that so much is at stake that you simply have to chip away at it. There is no alternative to rolling up your sleeves, working together, and trying to fashion a compromise. And that is precisely what we have sought to do over the last six months with you. We've been able to achieve a number of compromises, and I hope that by doing that, we've been able to steer the European Union in the right direction in many cases. In other instances, however, uh, in terms of the dimension, um, there uh, are uh, other uh, issues at stake. Allow me to start with Brexit. Now, when we took over in July, we were asked to do everything in our power to preserve the unity of the 27. And my heartfelt thanks go to the President of the Commission as well as to Michel Barnier for their untiring efforts because they have been successful. We have preserved that unity amongst the EU 27 and the European Union, I believe, in negotiations with the United Kingdom has nothing to reproach itself for because we negotiated a very balanced uh, exit agreement and we also have a political declaration on the future of our relationship. Now, even if 
things don't go uh, our way this evening in the vote in the British Parliament, and even if the next few weeks and months are rocky, it is important that we continue to sing from the same hymn sheet, we in the Council, the Commission and Parliament. And following on from its presidency, I can assure you that Austria will do everything it can to support that line. Now, the watchword for our presidency was a Europe that protects, and we focused on three priorities. First of all, security and the fight against illegal migration. Secondly, prosperity and competitiveness. And thirdly, our neighborhood, because if we do wish to guarantee security in Europe, then we have to fight for stability in our neighboring countries. Now, first of all, on security and migration policy. Now, despite deadlock when it came to distribution, we have been able to secure agreements with third countries, particularly Egypt, but with other countries as well. We've been able to make sure that it is not only European ships European vessels carrying out uh, Coast Guard operations. Rather, we have the Egyptian and Libyan Coast Guards intervening more in order then to take people back to North Africa. And what that has meant is that overall we have 95% fewer people coming into Europe than back in 2015. And it's important, there's not only been a drop-off in the number of arrivals, but more importantly, there's been a massive drop in the number of deaths in the Mediterranean. So the central Mediterranean route, the Italian Mediterranean route, to all intents and purposes, has been shut down. And in the last few weeks, we have virtually no arrivals across that Mediterranean route. It's also been possible to reach a agreement amongst uh, the Home Affairs Ministers to beef up Frontex's mandate, and that way Frontex can play a, a more substantial role when it comes to increases in staff and personnel. Again, we stand behind all the Commission's proposals. We will continue to do so in future, and I would invite all of you to speak to your heads of governments because there are a few that still need persuading in this regard. Now, when it comes to the distribution key, well, what we need now is a fresh proposal. And I think that that is a duty of solidarity. And I would like to thank the Commission for all its support for our proposals. Moving on now to the next chapter, prosperity and competitiveness, sustainable development, uh, an increase in our prosperity. We have focused on the sustainable improvement of the single market. And I am delighted that uh, the number of proposals uh, for the digital single market have being completed when it comes to cyber security, uh, for example. Above and beyond that, we have also uh, dealt with the fair management of the internet. And I think that we were even able to turn things around in the council because a number of important decisions were lacking. And we uh, called on uh, you and others to try and bring round those countries who are still a little bit skeptical in this regard. Now, Something very close to uh, Austria's uh, heart is sustainability, and that is why we are very keen uh, on uh, a plastics ban as well as reducing CO2 emissions, uh, particularly for heavy goods vehicles. And that is why we're delighted that with the assistance of Council and Parliament, we were able to uh, carry out a very successful trialogue. Now, we are also seeking bans on certain carcinogens uh, as well uh, as on a European employment agency. And these are further steps forward that we have made that I wish to mention in this context. Now, if we are to have a truly robust Europe, one that is generally competitive, then we need a modern budget. Now, I concede that our negotiations on the multi-annual financial framework was something that I was very skeptical about at the outset, um, but it has been possible uh, to notch up some successes. And 
of course, we uh, kept up the pace um, under pressure from the Commission, and they were quite right to say that in actual fact more progress has been made than I originally expected, and that meant that we were able to hand over uh, a fully completed negotiation box at the end of December, and I very much hope uh, that negotiations will continue in that spirit. And the third priority we set ourselves uh, was to attend to our neighborhood policy. Now, of course, as an Austrian, I am very grateful that the Western Balkans um, have uh, moved a center stage uh, in Europe's preoccupations. It's important that we have uh, strong uh, states in the Western Balkans. It was very important that we resolve the dispute uh, over uh, Macedonia's name, uh, as well as disputes between Serbia and Montenegro, and Montenegro. And I think that that is a very important uh, signal um, of the European perspective for this region. And I am very grateful uh, to the European presidency particularly Bulgaria, uh, which ushered in uh, this era of paying more attention to the Western Balkans. President Tajani, I should like to thank you for cooperation on the Africa Forum in particular. We organized a forum in Vienna uh, in conjunction with the African Union in order to try and pay more attention to economic development in Africa, to promote sustainable development. We don't simply want to uh, allow uh, the uh, Chinese to be responsible for investment of the continent, to basically leave it to the Chinese. And we've had a lot of very positive feedback, and that is why uh, my gratitude goes to all of those who made that forum possible. Finally, um, it is important for me personally uh, to address an issue which is crucial to us uh, as Republic of Austria, namely the fight against anti-Semitism and anti-Zionism. In November, in Vienna, we convened the first European conference on this subject, inviting along um, all Europe all European Jewish communities. And I believe uh, that we have now set the course um, for future activities in this regard. I'd like to thank the Commission and Council for all of their support. I think that it is important because we uh, have a situation in which Jews feel unsafe in some countries of the European Union. We shouldn't simply acknowledge that as the European Union. Rather, we should go about tackling it, tackling it determinedly. I should like to once again thank the Commission, particularly President Juncker, as well as the European Parliament, particularly President Tajani, as well as all other heads of state and government, as well as member states, for all their very positive and constructive cooperation during the six months of our presidency. We have been unfailing in our efforts to do our bit, to make our contribution to strengthening the European Union and to come forward with compromises to thorny issues. And I think that that has been the case to a certain extent. We've been successful, and as Republic of Austria, we will continue to do what we can to reinforce uh, the European Union. And I know that uh, elections are in the air, and so I would wish all of those standing for re-election to the European Parliament every success in May, and I hope that there is a very objective debate about the future of the European Union during that election campaign. That's something we badly need, but I always hope that that debate is conducted in a respectful manner, as that is something that would benefit Europe as a whole, particularly people across the member states of our European Union. So once again, thank you very much for a spirit of cooperation over the last six months, and I wish the European Union every success in the future.